Hi everyone. Well, this is not your standard fancy intro. This is an extra episode. As some of you might know, we've been recently been sued in Italy for visiting an old bunker. And in this extra episode, I'm gonna tell you my perspective about what happened. We go back to 2020. Frank and I went to Italy, really last minute, to try a cruise ship, which is supposed to go to scrap. So we wanna get close to the cruise ship, but uh, it's like nearly impossible. I check entrance uh, number four. Huh? I think we need to walk with two letters for a few miles. Uh, it's really shitty. This cruise ship mission completely failed. And meanwhile, the ship is scrapped. One of the side quests I had was a check of an underground military facility. I couldn't find information, no other explorers had been inside. This is the only image I could find. The article tells about a secret underground city from the Cold War. It's abandoned, but everything is still there. For me, this sounds like a holy grail. On street view, you can see there are some big doors. And I already see a possible entrance. There's a little space to climb through above the door. And the big metal door is also open behind the fence. You can see graffiti and garbage around the gate. And it's completely fenced off, so nobody can go inside. The only problem which I can see is that there is a camera pointing to the entrance. And I have no clue if this place is used as something else, like a storage. Because it's located next to an active naval base. There is also a military sign. When I see this, I just think it's a relic of the past. Not a single armed soldier will be patrolling in there. So on our first day in Italy, we put tape on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we come back, we will go back in a few days and see if the tape is still there. Why did we do this? Well, it's not to obstruct the camera on purpose, but just to see if the camera is being watched. When the tape is gone, the property is being watched. If the tape is still there, nobody watches this place. The chances were small it was an active camera, because it's an old one. Here you can see a bad image of the taped camera in the documents of the court case. A week later I return. Frank drops me off and I check the tape. Still there. So I climb the fence and just fit through. Frank doesn't get inside. But when I push the fence from the inside, he fits without damaging the fence. We're inside. I'm totally excited because we don't know what to expect. We quickly find the TV screens which were once connected to the security cameras outside. In the beginning, this facility seems to be dismantled, but quickly it turns out it's a real-time capsule. As you can see for yourself, there are no signs this bunker is still used. Everything is rusted and decayed. Since the article was talking about a city, I expected to find barracks too, but we had seen all the rooms. There was just one staircase going up, I didn't check. I know in advance it's probably an escape hatch, but I just have to clear it. Because of the bad air and rust, I go back outside to get the gas meter out of the car. I run back in the middle of the night to the entrance and a police car drives by. Since this was pretty suspicious, I thought my explore would be over. But no, they stop, look at me and continue again. Lucky me, I go up the stairs which was really dangerous. And on the top, I find nothing but some escape hatches. The way back down, one of the most scary moments in my life. I'm sweating, man, like crazy. A little bit from free fear, I guess. Every step can result in a deadly fall. Like here, you can see how rusty it is. <laughs> I'm never afraid, but now, Oh my god, oh, the staircase. <laughs> you got right, you look like Casper the Belly <laughs> <the friendly> Ghost. <laughs> no, it was really tricky, man. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, huh. now the tricky part getting out. My original plan was to visit some more objects in the near area but decided not to push my luck too far. I'm in Turkey, visiting old cruise ships when the video goes online. But even before that, I'm already in the newspapers. I did not disclose the location, but you can see how fast these things go. They say nobody ever documented it like us, and that it looks professional. They think we're Americans. Well, at this point, I don't worry too much. It's just some extra advertisement for the video. And apparently, we made it to the printed news as well. The next morning I see articles. 
They are already welding the entry to the facility. I am astonished how fast this happened, especially for Italy. Well, at least not a dozen of copycats who already packed their bags to make the same video will get inside now. The next article in March is more serious. They say that we are unmasked. Well, I never hid my identity, because you can find my real name just about everywhere. They found us because they worked together with the Interpol. The only strange thing is that I am always 25 years old in the article, which is not my age. It's April 2021 and I'm in Portugal, exploring an old ceramics factory and making these shots. When I get a phone call from Frank, he received a letter from Italy. We are officially sued. Time to put the video in private. Frank gets a lawyer. I wait. Nothing arrives. Months go by and I make my first intercontinental trip since the start of the pandemic. After an emergency landing I'm stuck in Ireland. I receive a call from my old teacher. We work together on some projects. He tells me somebody received a letter on an old post address. How the hell did this letter end up here? This was really a bad day. A few weeks later I drive to Belgium to pick up the post and get a lawyer too. The charge is pretty serious clandestine introduction into military sites and unjustified possession of espionage means and risk a sentence from one to five years in prison. Let's get back to the bunker. I can't imagine what's supposed to be a secret in here. I only filmed old rusty objects. Maybe it's because I showed the whole structure? In the court papers I read I bring the soldiers in danger. Well, maybe, but the funny thing is, everything turned out to be documented. After exploring this place, I wanted to buy a book in which they had some information about this place. It was sold out, but managed to get a copy after I got sued. It turns out there's a complete floor plan and some detailed pictures in the book. After seeing this I really wonder, how do they come up with the espionage thing? And when I find other articles, it becomes even more interesting. Because of our video, people found out asbestos removal did not happen while funds was already given. Now they have to spend a lot of money for their asbestos removal inside the facility. Of course I don't know all the details, but it seems like we brought things to light which the navy was not happy about. Maybe that's why they decided to sue us. They also talk about the health risk inside. While technicians only went inside with full protective suits, we just wore regular clothing. Well, we didn't know it would be this bad. And to be honest, we already walked into so much places with asbestos in the past decades. It's not like urban explorers wear full protective suits all the time. On this footage, you can see the asbestos clearly laying on the ground. Ah well, at least the site is clean now. That's the good side of the story. Meanwhile, I receive a 28 page document about the case from my lawyer, in which I could see how we got traced, comments from different people, etc. Well, in this digital age, of course, social media is the fastest and easiest place to find you. Another interesting fact I can show you is the inspection at the entrance. They didn't see signs of a forced entry, but think we forced the way inside. Luckily I saved an image of Street View before my visit. And there's also a street view after my visit. You clearly see the door is in the exact same position. We get a court date and things slowly come to an end. In the end, it turns out we don't even have to go to court in Italy. The only thing I'm afraid of for the conviction is the changing world. With the war going on in Ukraine and the threat of World War III, all military objects became very sensitive. I'm quite sure some abandoned facilities will be reused again, like this one. So fellow adventurers, please watch out what you visit in which country. Thanks to our lawyers we don't get convicted for espionage and we only get a $250 fine for entering military grounds. A relief, but that also came with a price. We lost a lot of money for the lawyers. Of course, we know these things can happen and it's our own fault. But if you feel bad for us and want to donate something, feel free to click the link in the description. Everything is welcome. Another option to support is to become a Patreon or buy the coffee table books I published with the most amazing abandoned places in the world. And about the future of this amazing facility, it seems to be top secret. 
I heard it's supposed to become a museum. But with the threat of World War 3, who knows, maybe it will have a military purpose. If you want to see the whole adventure, click the right button on the screen. For now, this is the end of the story. Thanks for watching and see you at our next adventure.